Hello everyone and welcome to Lynn Likes. I'm Miss Lynn here at the Graves Library and I've been asked to um, come together with you on a monthly basis to share books that I like, ideas that I like, or something that just appeals to me when I'm looking at storybooks, especially picture books. So today I have uh, pulled together a few books that I'd like to share with you and they are all books that contain quirky language. I love fun words. I also love fun phrases and different words that maybe we haven't heard in a while or that you might not have heard either as a young child or um, your mom or dad. But I love them and I'm a writer when I'm not here at the library. I spend time looking for different words to enhance my writing and one of the ways I do that is to come to the library and find books that um, speak to me and ways that I need uh, to enhance my writing. And one of them that I absolutely love is called L is for Lollygag. It is quirky words for a clever tongue. It's a Chronicle Books publication and they are out in San Francisco. So a shout out to them. So I'm just going to open up one of these pages and again, I love the word lollygag. It is a book that's set up alphabetically to show a variety of quirky words that you can say or use in your writing. So let's see, um, I'm going to share curmudgeon. A very cranky person is a curmudgeon. And uh, to lollygag is to dilly-dally or to take your time on in your way, not to be rushed. Let's see if I can find one more. Uh, let's see. That's a jack of all trades. Someone who can do all kinds of work. Hmm, that's really interesting. Someone who could be a plumber, an electrician, a truck driver. That's a jack of all trades. And how about ruckus. What a fun word to say. Let's create a big ruckus or a disturbance, something that is loud and noisy. And one more quirky word, a whirling dervish. Mm, someone who just spins around and around and around. So that's my go-to book for looking for quirky language. And so I started looking through the books here in the children's room, and I found one written by Melissa Sweet and published by Houghton Mifflin. It's called Carmine, A Little More Red. It did win an award, a Lupin Award, which is uh, an award that's given to children's picture books here in the state of Maine. But I flagged a couple of pages, and I found that Melissa likes quirky words too. And here on this page, she uses the word dilly-dally. Red cannot dilly-dally on her way to her grandmother's. She needs to use her strong legs and get that bike out and over the path. No, she cannot dilly-dally. And then I noticed that Melissa liked to use the word nincompoop. <laughs> That's a silly head. Someone who just... Is, isn't very nice to call a person an income poop, but sometimes in this story, Carmine thought about it. And then one more word. Melissa Sweet has used the word voila. Mm. Carmine had just exclaimed something, voila, look at that. Again. Carmine, a little more red, has a lot of fun words in it. Quirky words, I'll say, and fun to say. All right, let's see. Another book that I use and have looked through is called There's a Frog in My Throat. <laughs> what does that even mean, some of you might be saying. This is 440 animal sayings that a little bird told me. It's written by Lorene Leedy and Pat Street. 
and the publisher is Holiday House in New York City. So this also takes quirky fun words such as monkey business, it's what being silly behavior is all about, or a phrase to horse around, to play in a very active rowdy way. And this one down here, it's the cat's meow. It means it's just terrific. And if you're a lucky duck, you're a very fortunate person. I know, it's language is so much fun to play with. I'll just show you, show you a sample page. Look at all that. I know, I don't give a hoot. I just don't care. This is for the birds. It's no good. You're cuckoo. You're nuts. A little bird told me, hmm, I'm not going to say who told me. So it's a fun book that gives you the quirky saying or quirky word and then gives you a little bit more understanding if you're not sure what that means. So again, I like to use these quirky words in my, in my writing and have a lot of fun finding books like this that will give me that information. I'll show you the cover again. And there's a frog in my throat. All right, and then I thought I would read this one to you. Oh, it's our word curmudgeon. Look at that face. He's a grump. The Unbudgeable Curmudgeon. And it's written by Matthew Burgess and illustrated by Fiona Woodcock. A curmudgeon is a bad-tempered, difficult, cranky person. A grouch. And Alfred Knopf is our publisher, and they're also in New York. Here's our title page. Okay, how do you budge an unbudgeable curmudgeon who really refuses to budge? He doesn't want to move. Get myself situated so you can see this. You might ask the curmudgeon if he wouldn't mind scooching over a smidgen, or you could distract the curmudgeon by changing the subject. Look, a chihuahua on roller skates. She's trying everything she wants him to move, even just a little bit. Maybe he's hungry. You could offer the curmudgeon a chunky wedge of your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Chocolate fudge brownies have been known to make curmudgeons budge. But beware, sugar can worsen the curmudgeon's condition. You might try getting the curmudgeon in trouble. Mom, maybe that will budge him. Some say if you can't budge him, join him. But where does that get you? Nowhere. You're going to sit in that chair. <laughs> It wouldn't be right to bludgeon the curmudgeon, but maybe he deserves one humongous nudge. A very big movement. Nudge someone. Use your shoulder and nudge them. Oh, she keeps trying. Oh, look at that. She's trying and trying. Something happens. How do you budge an unbudgeable curmudgeon who really refuses to budge? Hugs can budge a curmudgeon. Reading a book in a cozy nook can do the trick. If all else fails, you can try turning on a favorite song, the one that makes you sing along. Hmm. Sometimes we don't want to budge, do we? It can be tricky to get the gunk off the funkiest funks, but once a curmudgeon begins to budge, once that curmudgeon begins to move, look what's happening. You'd be surprised how quickly the grouchiness can vanish. They are having a really good time. A little nudge to the curmudgeon who wouldn't budge little music, little dancing, and now they're painting. I think that word curmudgeon is, it's a lot of fun to say. Uh-oh. They were having a good time together and someone 
might be turning back into that curmudgeon. And there's our back cover. And it gives that definition of curmudgeon. Difficult, cranky person, a grouch. Sometimes I can be a curmudgeon too, but then I'm easily talked right out of it. Okay, so another book that I found here at Graves, which also helps fulfill my need for quirky fun words, is a wonderful um, book written by Anne Sibley O'Brien. She's an author who lives on Peaks Island in the Casco Bay area up here in Maine, and this book was illustrated by Susan Gall. Hocus Pocus, it's fall! And I thought, oh, that sounds like a great fun word. Hocus Pocus. Let's bring fall to us. So let's see. Take a peek at her illustrator. It's, uh, again, it's Susan Gall who drew the pictures, and the publisher is Abrams Appleseed of New York City. I'd like to read this one to you as, again, I had a lot of fun looking around for books with quirky language, and many books that I did find uh, would take one word, like the curmudgeon book, and build an entire story around it. Other books, like this one by Anne Sibley O'Brien, has several uh, fun, quirky words on every page. Here we go. Summer days begin to cool. Alakazam. And look what this book does. <gasps> wow. Alakazam. It's time for school. Alakazam. Just like that. Summer goes and school starts again. Spiky pods are brown and dried. Open sesame. <gasps> clouds inside. Open sesame, clouds inside. Look at all the seed pods of that milkweed. Open sesame. Geese and ducks prepare to fly. Zip and zing. Wow. They're in the sky. Zip and zing. Leaves on trees are green and bright. Abracadabra. What a sight! Magical, just magical, and magical words for this beautiful storybook. Chilly gusts toss leaves around. Shazam! A blanket on the ground. Busy squirrels fill their cheeks. Abba Zabba. Let's see. Abba Zabba. Food for weeks. Bins of fruit are piled high. Higgledy piggledy. I love that word. We made a pie. Pick a pumpkin, orange and fat, razzle dazzle. <gasps> Look at that. That might be my favorite page. Chipmunks dig their burrows deep. Sim salabim. They're fast asleep. Shh. Put on a hat, a woolly sweater. Presto change -o. That feels better. Wrap up tight, 
with winter near. Hocus pocus, fall is here. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. I especially enjoy the writing of Anne Sibley O'Brien and her use of fun, quirky words, right along with Melissa Sweet and the other books that I introduced you to today. And I'm going back to my favorite, my favorite page because I love saying the words razzle dazzle, pick a pumpkin, orange and fat. Razzle dazzle, look at that. Thank you everyone for joining me today for Lynn Likes. I look forward to seeing you again next month uh, on a different topic of things that I like having to do with writing and picture books. And in the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you can maybe pop in the Graves Library. These books are available too. And we could have another conversation about quirky language and different words to use in our vocabulary and in our writing and in our reading. Thank you again and take care.